73 yards is everything great and terrible about Russell T. Davis's Doctor Who. This is going to be a quick and unpolished thing because I have too many other things to be doing. Spoilers for 73 yards from the beginning. There's a scene a third of the way into 73 yards where Ruby is in a pub in a small village in Wales. She's freaked out because the Doctor has vanished and there's an old woman watching her. The old woman, who will call for Herald for the sake of this video, maintains a constant distance from Ruby, 73 yards, but Ruby never sees her move. She's always facing Ruby and always making strange signs with her hands. In the pub, Ruby tells the patrons about this and about how she and the Doctor broke a fairy circle. The landlady and the people drinking at the pub treat this very seriously. They explain to Ruby that Mad Jack is unbound. Anyway, it then turns out that the locals were taking the piss out of Ruby for being credulous, believing in fairy circles and thinking they would too. This scene is a microcosm about everything great and terrible about 73 Yards and Russell C. Davis's Doctor Who generally. The Herald is still watching Ruby the next day. Anyone who talks to her looks at Ruby and then flees in terror and or disgust. The landlady speaks to a man who fled and tells Ruby to get out because the man's terrified of her. Ruby heads back to London. Her mum talks to the Herald and flees before evicting Ruby and getting an injunction out on her. Ruby lives her life for over a year, the Herald watching her the whole time. Absolutely wonderful character Kate Lethbridge Stewart meets up with Ruby. Kate promises to help. Ruby explains that the Herald is always exactly 73 yards away, which is 66.7 metres for people who use proper measurements. Ruby also explains the TARDIS is silent and dormant, the Herald has a perception filter, and she doesn't show up properly when photographed. Unit try to apprehend the Herald, but they grow terrified and or disgusted with Ruby and leave with no explanation. Ruby lives her life for over a decade until she learns that an evil politician the Doctor exposited about at the start of the episode is trying to be elected. Ruby decides to prevent the politician from initiating World War III. She works with him for years until she deduces he's going to launch nuclear weapons in a few days, at which point she manoeuvres the Herald so she's standing next to the politician. The politician talks to the Herald, is terrified of Ruby, and flees, quitting politics. Well done, Ruby. Ruby, having prevented Armageddon, maybe, lives the rest of her life until she dies in a hospital bed, at which point she appears back at the start of the episode as the Herald, where she warns past Ruby not to break the fairy circle. Past Ruby stops the Doctor from breaking the circle, and then they have a nice time in Wales whilst Ruby feels deja vu about being there before. The atmosphere of this episode is amazing. The performances are great. It's so sinister because we know something's going on, but we don't know what. It's really uncanny. It's so easy to sympathise with how much this messes with Ruby's head because the Herald keeps her completely isolated. She can never tell anyone about the Herald because everyone, she, every time she does, they become terrified of and or disgusted with her. In the Den of Geek comment section for the 73 Yards review, many people were saying how it was their favourite episode of Doctor Who in some time. Someone put it next to classics like Blink, Midnight and Listen. I think this is a perfectly fair reaction if you're drawn in by the atmosphere and treating the episode as kind of a tone poem. And that might sound like I'm being really patronising, no, 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 not at all. Some of my favourite animes are tone poems, like uh, Flying Witch and Laid Back Camp. Uh, there's an episode of Flying Witch where in the first half of the, half of the episode, a cat goes for a walk, and in the second half of the episode, the cat goes for the same walk whilst another character follows that cat. That's all that happens, and I love it. So tone poems are not bad. So if you like this because of its amazingly oppressive, isolating and fearful atmosphere... Yes. The episode struggles if you're into the mystery of the story, however. We're left with a lot of questions. What with a woman's repeating gestures? Why 73 yards? Precisely 73 yards? Why did people become terrified of and or disgusted with Ruby if they spoke to her? What did the Herald say to the people who went to talk to her? What, when you get right down to it, was the point? And now you might want to say that people who focus on these questions are being nitpicky and watching the episode wrong. But what that defence is actually saying is you shouldn't be invested in the story of this episode. And I guarantee you, if those questions had been answered, you wouldn't be telling people they were wrong to ask them. So here's the main problem with 73 Yards. Ultimately, the story didn't matter. At all. Nothing that happened after the Doctor broke the fairy circle and before Ruby dying and warming herself about the doom mattered. And that might sound over the top, but it's an easily defensible statement. Let's imagine everything between the Doctor breaking the circle and Ruby going back in time was completely different. 
Let's say instead of a herald appearing, Ruby was drawn to the realm of the fairies for her part in breaking the circle. In the realm of fairies, she was tortured, then kept as an indentured servant, and then she fought in a war, she fell in love, defeated an evil fairy, and then died. Having done some good with her life, but ultimately wishing she'd never let the Doctor break the fairy circle. She then gets taken back to the past, and gets past Ruby to stop the Doctor from breaking the circle. In this alternate plot, if it was switched for the real one, the ending of the episode we got would have been exactly the same. This means nothing which happened in the episode, the meat of it, the middle two-thirds. Yeah, the middle two-thirds, half. None of it mattered. The only thing that mattered was for Ruby to regret being next to the Doctor when he broke the fairy circle. And so we return to the Welsh pub I started off talking about. On the surface level, the scene is about Welsh locals taking the piss out of an ignorant tourist. But we could also read it as a condemnation of the idea that we should be asking questions about the Herald. The scene could be telling us, if you take the Herald too seriously, you're being ridiculous and we should laugh at you. And this sentiment kind of matches the way 73 Yards is written. Ruby doesn't spend any time trying to work out what the Herald's gestures mean. She explains to Kate that she did some experimentation, but we don't see her do it. It's all tell rather than show. The Kate scene neatly summarises the episode's approach to the mystery. It's not important. Ruby investigated off screen. And that's Russell's writing. His characters are great. He's got a real talent for creating atmosphere and setting up amazing mysteries. And he has no talent whatsoever for giving answers to the mysteries he sets up. As I said in my Stephen Moffat video, Russell is a vibes guy. He's not interested in detail. I don't think 73 Yards is good. I think it has great atmosphere and characters, but it completely fails as a story, which means for me, half of the episode is just kind of nothing. However, I still had a good time watching it. After the quagmire of the Chris Chibnall era, Doctor Who is back to being fun to watch. I'll take it.